Hey everyone, so this is more of a quick tip than a how to, painting the same thing four different ways to get the same effect. Hey everyone, so this is a video that kind of, or an idea that came out of a comment that I got a while ago, and apologies, I probably should have done something a bit quicker, around someone wanting to know how to paint power swords, and I thought to myself, I'm not kind of doing how to's as such but I thought it'd be interesting to think about ways of painting different things in different ways and so I thought about um, the different ways I paint things especially in this instance power swords and four different obvious ways that I might go about doing it and uh, 3d printed some swords out and I just set about having a go so I think to myself, well, there's wet blending, and then there's glazing, and then there's what I call blocking, and then, of course, there's airbrushing. And so I thought, I'll start with wet blending, something I don't use explicitly that often. And, you know, it's fairly straightforward. And again, I'm not here to explain how to do it or the, 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 the uh, effectiveness of doing it well. And, and I should also point out that in the video, I'm not really trying to get a, uh, you know, display quality effect. It's just, it's a quick, overview of you know, the sorts of effects it would give you. So you know, wet blending, fairly straightforward, wet paint, brush, down, blend, and you know, you can get a really nice effect really, really quickly, and you can see on the sword here, you know, you get pretty quickly a nice different blend from one to the other. The blocking, uh, it's just something I use quite a lot, and I think I, I gravitate more towards it, because what you can see here is the notion that you are placing the, the colours, or the lights, or the, or the darks, where you want them to be and, and then you are um, you're not having to rely on your technique or your brush ability or, or whatever it is to to kind of to create that transition what you're doing is essentially blocking in the different areas and then very very carefully using mid-tones between the two of those specific colors to create that fade and I guess there is probably elements of glazing and of wet blending in but just in those really specific little small areas and I think this is the reason I like it, um, because it, 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 it's less, or the, the area is much smaller, you have far more degree of control over where you want that, that, uh, that blend to be, as opposed to say wet blending, or especially when we get to glazing, it's much more of a longer transition, or you know, can be a longer transition, which I don't have as much confidence with, I guess. Um, so for me, I, I gravitate more to this kind of style because it, it's quite um, binary. It's quite, you know, sort of uh, Boolean almost, you know, one, zero. And then you then kind of work out the, where you want that blend to be precisely. And I, I just feel a lot more control in that area. The glazing, um, again, I mean, there, there is the kind of the, the, the de facto standard. It's kind of where I start and I suspect quite a lot of people start from. Um, the whole notion around this kind of slow gradient transitions with absolutely thin transparent glazes to build up the colour from a dark or a mid to a lot of whatever. You know, usually start with a mid and go each way. I really don't get on with glazing and I think it's probably for three reasons. One, I'm too impatient. I always find glazing... I always find glazing takes far too long. Um, also, I find that the, uh, the, the the fact that you can destroy if you don't let it dry quickly enough, you you know you don't let it dry, you can destroy the effect. You know you knock a little bit of that pool at the end, and of course it then all goes completely to hell. And equally, I find the uh, the transition. I often get that I'm often not thin enough with my paint, and so the transition is too uh, immediate, and and it needs to be. A bit thinner and it takes even longer and I think I'm a bit too impatient and then of course the obvious the, the most amazing transitions are, are airbrushes because they do they you know hands down in my opinion and I think quite a lot of people's opinions create the most amazing smooth blended transitions and if I was looking for super quick really effective and critically consistent uh, way of doing something like a power sword I probably would always use an airbrush now they're very contextual because, of course, you can't put them everywhere. You can't use them everywhere, and and uh, you know, as has been demonstrated by the video, you know, you spend more time faffing with them, cleaning them, um, and and especially um, blocking stuff out. Um, um, the words are escaping me. 
masking. Masking was the word I was grasping for. And then you can, you know, I even tried here to kind of say, well, I'm going to attempt to really like push the highlight right at the end because, again, I was being a bit lazy and I put white in the airbrush and all those kinds of things. It's really hard to blend between a brush. It's really obvious where the, the where the blend between a brush and an airbrush effect is. And uh, you know, I tried to put a little bit of white on on the edges of the, the sword just to kind of finish it off. But you can kind of see there that it's really obvious where the brush starts and the airbrush finishes. So you know. Anyway, so there's very quickly four different ways of painting the same thing the same way. Power sword blend from dark to light. Uh, you know, you can wet blend, you can glaze, you can what I call block, um, and again, you know, it might not be called blocking. I call it blocking and airbrush. And there are many other ways. I mean, I thought about doing uh, oil paints, basically wet blending. Um, you know, you could do the Games Workshop layering method, different colours, edge, edge highlighting, all that kind of stuff. But there's a bunch of other ways of doing it, you know, one brush blending or, you know, loaded brush, Ben comments, Ben comments. Loaded brush, I suck at loaded brush. I tried to do it, I'll be honest. I did actually try to do it for this. I, I really suck at loaded brush. There'd be no point in me, me doing it, e even for something as quick and dirty as this. It, I, I'm really not good. But there's all these different ways of doing it. It'd be really interesting to hear in the, in the video comments what you like doing but I think for me what this brings home is this notion of you might want to learn how to do something or you might want to you see something on on YouTube or Instagram and go oh that's amazing and I'll have to do that and you know someone's done it a particular way but you're not very good at it or not very competent at it or you've never even tried it before and I think what this has taught me is is that you know everyone's got like a comfort zone and you know you can knock stuff out but equally it's all about learning where your deficiencies are and about trying to get better and I clearly need to spend a lot more time glazing and probably on loaded brush but that's a whole other thing anyway uh, that's it just wanted to be super quick uh, thanks for watching um, please like share and subscribe and all those fantastic things that people have been doing and comment below I'd love to hear what people think of you know this and other things and be happy to do other kind of quick kind of ideas not tips but kind of ideas I want thought-provoking ideas that I'm uh, kind of throwing out if you didn't like this, then uh, thank you for listening as long as you have. And uh, this button works as well as this button. Um, but uh, yeah, um, see you next time around.